Welcome, my name is Z. I'll be your host for the Framework Developer Bootcamp. This show is for people who want to become web or mobile developers. Really, anyone who wants to learn programming will learn about new technologies and coding techniques each show. My goal for this show is to give you a taste of the kind of work developers do and the tools we use for every project. If you have been following our show, in the first episode, we went over how to create a static web page using HTML and CSS. There are a lot you could do with those two languages, such as curating an album of your favorite photos or impressing your potential employers with an elaborate online resume. However, this doesn't allow for a lot of user interactions. For example, say if you need to build a website where visitors can sign up for an account and post their favorite photos. HTML and CSS alone won't cut it. This is where web application frameworks come in. These frameworks simplify the development of complex interactive web applications. And some examples of what these frameworks do are handling connections to databases, providing middleware for authorization and authentication, and rendering HTML dynamically with data, just to name a few. In this lesson, I'll give a brief introduction to a web application framework called Ruby on Rails. It's written in the programming language called Ruby, as the framework name may suggest. It's a powerful and mature web application framework, popular with many web developers due to its simplicity and large community support. We'll also be building a simple to-do app on C9 to give you a taste of building a web application. During each episode of Framework, I'll be inviting you to follow along with me. As you're watching, don't be afraid to pause the video or watch it more than once so you can enter the code or type in the commands right along with me. Thanks for watching Framework. Let's get started. Once you've signed to the C9, go ahead and create a new workspace. For this workspace name, let's call it Ruby on Rails. We'll leave the description blank and let's let's use public. And we'll select the Ruby template here. And then click create workspace. Once the workspace is created, this is a screen you should be seeing. Notice on the left hand side, there are a lot of folders and files that are being created already. The folders that are of particular interest to us for this session are the app folder, the config folder, and the DB folder. The app folder contains custom code for the application. The config folder contains configuration files and the DB folder contains database related files, such as migration files and the C file. If we look at the app folder, we may notice a couple folders called controllers, models, and views. So Ruby on Rails uses an architecture known as MVC, or model view controller. The model is the part of the architecture that provides the developer a way to interact with data from the database. The view provides the template to render the data in a user-friendly manner, usually in the form of a web page. The controller applies business logic to the data pulled from the database and then feed that data to the views. The corresponding files for, M for the MVC architecture are stored in the controllers, the models, and the views, as the name suggests. So now that we've had an overview of the important folders, we're going to run this empty Ruby on Rails project and see what we get. To run this project, we're going to type in the terminal rails server dash b dollar ip dash p dollar port p o r t it's important to capitalize IP and port here because they're environment variables. These are very these are specific to C9 because C9 stores the IP address of this workspace in the IP variable and the port in the port variable. And by typing in this command, we're binding this rail server that we're starting to this IP and port. So once we have that, Hit enter. And 
Okay. Once it's running, there's a little thing on the right, the little help. This is your code is running at HTTPS Ruby on Rails, your username, .c9users.io. You go ahead and just click on that URL, or you could copy and paste it into a browser. So it's going to bring you to a warning, warning screen from C9, which just says that your application is not guaranteed to be available for an extended period of time. Because this is, after all, a development environment. It's not a hosting environment as well as a couple other things, which I'll leave you to run, read through. So once you're done, click Open the App. Now, this is a landing sc screen for a Ruby on Rails application that doesn't have anything in it. It says, welcome aboard. You're writing Ruby on Rails. OK, so once we have our application up and running, we're ready to make changes to build our to-do app. The beauty of Ruby on Rails is that the framework provides many tools to help you get up and running very quickly. To show you what I mean, go to the terminal, or rather, click on the plus sign to the right of the terminal, and select New Terminal. We're going to type in the commands in the different terminal here, because the old one is running the server right now, so we can't type into it. Okay, so in the new terminal, type in Rails generate scaffold to do content string due date is date. Once you have that, hit enter. So what this command did was that it created a to-do object in the database. Well, it hasn't created a to-do model in the database yet. It created a migration that allows us to do that. It also created a bunch of test files, as well as a bunch of views here. We'll get a chance to see what those are very soon. But before we go back to the app, let's take a look at the migration file created. So under the DB folder, there is now a new folder called migrate. We're going to open that. There's a file that starts with many numbers. If we double click on it, we can open it and take a look. So in here, it's basically a Ruby file that says create table of name to do. And then in the table, we have a column called content of type string and another column called due date of type date. On top of those two columns, we're, we have what Rails gives us as a default, which is a set of timestamps, two to be specific. One, for, one to keep track of when a, a role is created, and one to keep track of when it's modified. So once we have a migration file that was created by the scaffold command, we could apply the migration file to the database. To do that, in the command line, we type in rake db migrate. We can hit enter. And it's going to apply this to the database by creating a table as well as the columns. So now, after we've migrated a database, we should be able to see the to-do functionalities. Let's go back to the other tab where we have our Rails application running right now. And in the URL, we're at the end of the URL, we're going to type slash two underscore deuce. Now, this is a default URL because the model we created is to do. So what, what it does is it's going to separate the two words with underscore and it's going to make it plural by adding an S at the end. You hit enter. And we should be on this screen. 
it says listing to do's and here are the and here are the columns that we created earlier what we're going to do is we're going to click new to do and then for to create new to do for this new to do we're going to call it finish homework and then we're going to make it do two days from today and go ahead and click create to do and we're brought to a screen where we are given the details of that to do we just created we could click go back and we create another one and we're going to make it do today and go back again and here it is here's the, our very simple to do app without without writing a single line of code we create a fully functional web application that allows us to add items to a to-do list edit them and remove them and to give you a brief overview of how this is working underneath the hood let's go back to the workspace so in the app folder of the workspace let's expand the views folder the model folder and the controllers folder remember these folders are the core of Ruby on Rails because they each contains a piece of the MVC architecture. So in the controllers, we have a file called to underscore do's underscore controller. So within it, we have a bunch of functions such as index, show, new. In the model, we have the, mo we have the to underscore do file, which corresponds to the to do model. And if we look under views, there was a new folder created called two underscore dos. If we expand that, we see a bunch of HTML files with names that correspond to what we see in the controller. For example, there's an index function, and there's also an index.html.erb. If we open it, we can see that this HTML is very similar to the application that we were looking at. For example, there's an h1 header that says listing to do's. And here we have listing to do's, which looks like a header. There's also a table with a header content due date, and then another empty one with a column span of three. That looks awful like this. So as you can see, this index.html.erb file corresponds to the slash two underscore dos. And in fact, when you type in two underscore dos, this index.html.erb file is the one that gets rendered. And notice that in the file, there are also angle brackets and the pound sign. That's a special Ruby syntax that allows you to write Ruby code and when it gets evaluated, it's going to replace this entire block with whatever values in them. For example, here, we're getting the content of the to-do. So, so once Ruby on Rails gets to this line of code, it's going to evaluate this, get the content, and replace this entire block with the content of the to-do. And similarly, there are also other functions such as show, new, which all have their corresponding HTML files. And that's basically how Ruby on Rails work. You define how to display the data in the, H in the HTML.erb files. And you could control how the data, and you could control what gets passed to the HTML.erb files in the controller. And at the same time, you could query those data by interacting with the model. That's it for this session. Feel free to modify the HTML code here and index that HTML and see how your changes affect the layout of the app. Okay, in this session, we learned a new web application framework called Ruby on Rails and created a very simple to-do app that reads user input, store in the database, and display all the data on a web page. 
many major websites such as Airbnb, GitHub, and Bloomberg use Ruby on Rails in their development stack. And you just got a taste of it. If you enjoy this show, why not give the Framework Professional Developer Program a shot? We help you become a professional developer in as little as 20 weeks. Our program is online, but everyone in the program has their own instructor, so your questions are always answered. You can try the program for free. Just sign up at learntoprogram.tv slash p slash try dash framework. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.